inshallah, wherever you are sitting at this moment of time, you will recite Surah Al-Fatiha together. So wherever you are, you recite Surah Al-Fatiha together. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the blessings and the barakah of Surah Al-Fatiha to make the exams easy upon ourselves, open our minds, and make us understand the content of our work that you have to study and allow us, inshallah, to write down the answers which are correct and the answers that, you know, are the question of the questions that I would like, you know, to attain the highest possible pass, inshallah, and And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability, you know, to study the deen and to study as well this worldly knowledge for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that that may be our means to attain Jannah inshallah bimillah. So inshallah all together we recite Surah Al-Fatiha. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahmanirrahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. Iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم شراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين يا الله سبحانه وتعالى accept all of your duas يا الله سبحانه وتعالى allow you إن شاء الله بإذن الله to go through the exams with a breeze and to leave the exam إن شاء الله with a breeze and with إن شاء الله بإذن الله high high marks and the marks that you would like to achieve inshallah so without further ado we'll go into the talk of this evening and that is islamic tips for preparing for exams inshallah so bismillah rahman rahim alhamdulillahi rabbin alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala khayri khalqillahi ajma'in sayyidina wa nabiyina wa mulana muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala anihi wa sahbi ajma'in سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قوني الله ما لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We are إن شاء الله بإذن الله من of us fighting our exams soon shortly in a week or week or two but there are certain things that you can that you can do to prepare yourself spiritually for the exam remember we need allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives he's our source of knowledge he's not what we have in our head it is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that allowed the knowledge to go into our heads to penetrate into our heads and it's allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will give us the ability to take that knowledge and place it down on the exam paper or wherever it might be. So we have to have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives. So inshallah, we will do a few tips on how to achieve that, inshallah, bimillah. Islamic tips for preparing for exams. So Islamic exam tip number one, purify your intentions. We have to purify our intentions. Now, what do you want from this exam? What is the reason for this exam? Is it to pass and then the afterwards, you know, to pass your, your cause and for that to work and to earn money? Is that your purpose? If that is your purpose, we should try to purify our intention. We should try to make our intention in line with, with the Quran and Sunnah so that we may be blessed in acquiring knowledge. Because if we acquire knowledge, and there's nothing to do with the deen, nothing to do with you know, the spirituality in there, then that won't be blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should do it with the intention to seek the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, the value of an action depends on the intentions behind it. So we have the exams. What is our intention for these exams? So if we can change our intention, then that will be like an ibadah, it will be like a worship that you are doing, and then we'll be blessed in that action of our exams, in us studying for the exams. As the Prophet Muhammad says in a hadith, 
The best person is the one who benefits all mankind. So if that is your purpose, if your purpose is to pass the exam so that you may benefit others with the knowledge you have, this is now following the sunnah. If you have that intention when going into the exams, then that will be as considered as a ibadah, as a worship, because you're doing something for who? For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to be of those that will benefit mankind. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he used to perform his subuh, his fajr prayer, he used to say the salams, assalamu alaikum, and assalamu alaikum after the, after the salah, then he used to make this dua, Allah ma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'ah. Oh Allah, ask you for beneficial knowledge. And this is beneficial knowledge. So if you are seeking this knowledge, and you are writing the exams, why? Prepare me for the exams, why? So that you may achieve and that you may attain this beneficial knowledge to help others, then that will be blessed in there because you're doing and you're following the dua of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that we should seek beneficial knowledge. What is beneficial knowledge? Knowledge at all benefits you in this world and, and the year after. So the first step is to purify our intentions and to have it in line with the Quran and Sunnah, that is to help others with that knowledge that you have, as well to acquire beneficial knowledge that will help you and help others. Islamic exam tip number two, keep on making dua. This is very important. Ask Allah to help you through your exams. Sometimes we think and we depend only on our ability to memorize, our ability to understand, but do we ever ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us? Because when we read, when we go over our work, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving us that ability. And sometimes we depend only on ourselves and we forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, when we are in difficulty, the first protocol is we look on Google, we look somewhere else, we ask someone, or we forget to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, أَمَّا يُجِيبُ الْمُقَرَّ إِذَا دَعَانَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, is he not best to respond to the disparate one who he calls upon him and removes evil? So this difficulty that you have of the exam that you have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will listen to you if you're in a difficulty. Sometimes you, we are stressed at the moment of time. You are in a difficulty. You make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can remove that difficulty. He can make things easy for you. You make dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might send someone to come to you and tell you exactly what to study for the exam. It might be that person found out by the course convener and it comes to you. But if you never had to make this dua, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help, this person might have not come to you. So ask Allah always, always, whenever you are reading and you find something difficult, what do you do? You ask Allah, oh Allah, make this easy for me. Oh Allah, grant me the understanding. We are in the exam, writing the exam, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this easy for me for, for, for me you know, when you're done with the exam you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to soften the heart of the, the markers and this in this way you are constantly constantly remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by doing that this is known as an ibadah you know the dua dua is an ibadah it is a worship you're worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if you worship Allah Allah loves you and Allah loves you he gives you and grants you whatever you want so exam Islamic exam tip number two, keep on making dua. Do not stop making dua. Always, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves it when you make dua. And he does not like it when you don't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So always keep on making dua. Islamic exam tip number three. Remember all success comes from Allah. So depend and rely on him. Many a times we rely on what? On our knowledge. We forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We study, we say, oh, I know everything. I know the textbook cover to cover and you rely on your knowledge. But what happens when you go to the exam room, you go blank. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the source of your knowledge. That knowledge you have, it's because Allah wants that knowledge to go into your head. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make you go blank, can give you a headache, can make you nausea in that exam. It can make you fall asleep when you just enter the exam and you don't write the exam. So always rely on Allah. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that's granting you this ability to write the exam. Remember that always. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is granting you the ability to study and to 
they to remember to memorize all that information and then they have to, to retrieve that and write it down on 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 paper it is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's giving you the permission it's not yourself it's allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving you the permission to do that as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran and my success is not but through allah upon him i have relied and to him i return so your success you have so what is this tawfiq? We always hear people say, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you tawfiq. But tawfiq is success from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. An example is, you know, two, let's say, math students. So they are studying mathematics. And, and the one student, he studies all night. The other student, he studies all night, but he said, okay, I will put aside 20 minutes, maybe 10 minutes to perform tahajjud or to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Both of them study, both of them are, are A students, they have the ability to think. The next day, they both write the exact same examination. The one student, he writes, he comes to the first question, and as always, you know, mathematic equations continue, so he has this part that follows another part. So he comes to the first part and he can't finish that part. It doesn't make sense to him. And then he can't complete the paper. The second student, the one that performed the hajjud, he writes, and when it comes to that same question, what happens? He thinks and thinks, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him tawfiq, even success, and then he understands it, and then he can complete the paper. The difference is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the success to the one. So it's not on our knowledge. Both of them studied. Both of them went over the work. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave success to one and not to the other. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for success. You know, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if you all depend on Allah with due reliance, meaning how you ought to depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning putting in the effort and, you know, then putting in the effort and depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will certainly give you provisions as he gives it to the birds who goes forth hungry in the morning and they turn with full bellies at dusk. Millions and millions of birds every morning go out. They go out. You, you never see you know, birds dead on the floor. They go out with the empty stomach, but they always come back with full bellies. They always come back full. Where do they find the food? They depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They depend on Allah and they, they do the effort. I mean, they go out to look for the food. So if you study, you make that effort, and you depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for you, provide for you what the knowledge you need to write that exam. So remember, all success comes from Allah and always depend and rely on Him. Islamic exam tip number four. Ask forgiveness before exams, during exams, and after exams. So ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So make istighfar. Depends. Why? By asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up the heavens for you. This can find in, in the ayah. Nuh is speaking here, and he's speaking to the people that is calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he says, Ask forgiveness of your Lord. Indeed, he is ever a perpetual forgiver, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgives continuously. He will send rain from the sky upon you in continuing showers. Now the word rain is used as added into the translation, but basically what scholars have said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send down from the skies and he will shower you upon that. Now the scholars have said that from the heavens comes what? Comes your revisions, your sustenance, comes your success because all that commandments have to come from the sky to us so if you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you success whatever you need success in that exam you know success in studying success in memorizing whatever you have to success in understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you that if you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness so before you study you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness while you are writing and you sometimes read over certain things and it doesn't come to your head, what do you do? 
You say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. If you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up your mind, will grant you from his provisions, so that you may understand the question and you may recall whatever you had studied. And this brings me to a beautiful poem of Imam Shafi'i. He says, Shakawti ila waqi' su'a hifti. I complained to Waqir, it was his teacher, about my poor memory. Imam Shafi had an exceptional memory. Whenever he used to read a book, he always used to cover one of the pages with his one hand because whatever he reads, he memorizes. So when he reads the first page and if he looks over to the other page, if he doesn't cover it, he will memorize that as well. So it will confuse him. He said that Imam Shafi never memorized, never, sorry, never read a book more than once. Because when he reads the book, he memorizes it, and he does not need to read it again. So one day, what happened was Imam Shafi, he had to read the same page twice in order to memorize it. So he complained to his sheikh. He said that normally it takes me one reading of a page to memorize that, but now I have to memorize it twice, meaning read it twice. So he said this, I complained to Waqi about my poor memories. So he advised me to leave off sinning. And inform me that knowledge is a light and that the light of Allah is not bestowed upon a sinner. So it's very important, the time of the exam is not to sin. You should never sin. You should try not to sin. We all sin, but we should try not to sin. More so when you're writing exams because we are attaining the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The knowledge we have is the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is not given to sinners. So try, you know, to always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and to stay away from sin. So Islamic exam tip number four, ask forgiveness before the exams, during the exams, and after the exams, because after the exam, things can still change for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can soften the hearts of the examiners. It might be that the examiners overlook certain of the questions, of your answers, and give you less marks. But if you, you know, constantly Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can soften the hearts of the examiners. And so they look for the marks they want to give you. So they give you the marks because you now you should get that marks. So it's very important to know that. Always ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islamic exam tip number five, pray to Hajjud Salah. Why? Half of the world is fast asleep. You, subhanAllah, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everyone around you is sleeping. You have a direct communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is because of the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says the Lord descends every night to the lowest heavens when one third of the night remains and sees. So when it is the last third of the night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends as the hadith says. And what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this. Who will call upon me that I may answer him? Who will ask of me that I may give him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making this request. If you want, you just ask at time in the morning, tahajjud, before fajr, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you that, whatever you want. And that's the reason why, subhanAllah, because if you are in the southern hemisphere and it's maybe five o'clock, most other people, I mean, those not going to work, let's say it's four o'clock or three o'clock, how many people are all asleep, like tossing and turning in the bed, but you are awake. Even one else in your house might be sleeping, you wake up and you go and you perform you will go in the water, you know, might be cold, might be warm water, but you perform wudu, and then the afterwards you go and perform salah for for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. It's very difficult for that to be for anyone else besides Allah because you're doing all that effort. Everyone else is sleeping, no one's watching you, no one's looking at you. That is a time when you're the most sincerest in your du'as, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Who will ask of me that I may give you? Give him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you whatever you ask. And the end of the dua says, who will seek my forgiveness that I may forgive him. So Islamic exam tip number five, pray to Hajjid Salah. Islamic exam tip number six, make dua for others that are writing. We know others as well, our friends, our classmates, our peers, they're writing exams as well. Make dua for them. Don't be all those stingy ones that only make dua for themselves, only think about themselves during the exams. And this is because of the dua hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that says, he who supplicates for his brother behind his back, brother or sister, the hadith is brother, but brother or sister, in his absence or her absence, meaning 
that they are not there. They never ask you for your dua. They're gone, but you think about them and you make dua for them. The angel commissioned for carrying supplications to his Lord, meaning the angel that takes a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So remember an angel, لا يعصون الله. An angel do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have no sins whatsoever. And they only do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order of them. So they don't have any sins. And that angel that does not have any sins, that is a pure being, will say, I mean to the dua firstly, and then it will say, and it is for you also. I mean, same to you. You see it, you may dua. If you say, for example, oh Allah, grant my classmates to pass the exams, then the angel will say, I mean, and may you pass the exams as well. The same to you. The same dua you made for them, it will go to you as well. And some scholars have said it's best to make dua for others because if you make dua for others, then at least you know that an angel will say amen to the dua and the same to you. So an angel will make dua for you if you make dua for others. So always make dua for others, those around you. Tell us how to make the exams easy for them. Islamic exam tip number seven. Help others with the work that they do not, that they do not understand by explaining and providing resources. This is very important. This is because the Prophet Muhammad says in a hadith, Allah helps his slave as long as he helps his brother. So as long as you help your brother or your sister with, with the understanding of the content of the work, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you the understanding. I'm not sure if you ever experienced this. You know, sometimes when we teach someone something, they do not understand and you understand it, but better than them, and while you are, you're teaching to them, then you get at that moment where you your understanding is better. Well, how do you understand it better afterwards? It's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps you now. You helped your friend to understand. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is helping you to understand it even better. This is because the hadith, Allah helps his slave as long as he helps his brother. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps the servants of Allah as long as the servants of Allah help their brothers and sisters. So always try to help, whatever it might be, by you know, helping them with the work, by giving them resources, whatever it might be to help them to attain as well you know, good marks. So it shouldn't be that you're stingy, that you always want to get the highest. If you want to get the highest, always help others. And subhanAllah will make things easier for you. So always help others, and Allah subhanAllah will make things easier for you. And the last tip I have here, Islamic exam tip number eight, have good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always have good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It might be that you let the exams and while you're writing, I think, oh, this is hard. I can't, you know, I won't be able to pass this. Always have good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can, you know, he has the ability to, to make you pass. He has the ability to make you pass. So always think good of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not pass you, then that will be the, the circumstance. As you see the hadith, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, Allah says, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is a hadith. I am as my servant thinks of me. If he thinks good of me, then, it, then so it shall be. So if you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pass you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow you to complete your exams, if you think of that, and this is way how you are depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you, you put all the effort in, and now you're depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you have good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you that. Always have good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, sometimes you might have anxieties, you feel overwhelmed after a difficult exam, you know, we feel like that, but always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always has our back. He always has our back. He will always give us the best. Sometimes failing will be the better. Sometimes passing will be the better. But you always wish that we pass. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always give you the best. Sometimes you think something is bad for you, but it's actually good for you. And sometimes you think something is bad for you, but it's actually good for you. Allah knows alone and we do not know. So we always hope for the best, whatever the outcome might be. If it is, we all ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let us pass the exams. But if something happened, you know, and you feel that, you know, you not feel, okay, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants this from us and he will you know, grant us the best in this world and the after. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's our sustainer, our nourisher. Because he's our 
Khira, our nourisher, the one that looks after us. He has to look after us in the best of the ability because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best nourisher. He's the best you know, one to look after an individual. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your sustainer and your nourisher, then of course you got the best. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you only the very best. So you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those that remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout this exam period that we may be successful in the exam period and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all our heart desires and our goals and our aspirations throughout this time period that we, inshallah, bi now go through this exam with a good intentions, verified and renewed intentions that you're doing this for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so this can be an ibadah and worship and can be blessed in it and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow us all inshallah bi to be together in Jannah as you are listening here may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that all of us will be in Jannah together and we can recall this moment so I, I say shukran again to the MSA for having this amazing program this Khatim al-Quran and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all those who have attended and all those who are listening. And without further ado, I will hand it in over to uh, the Amir Rami Spark, inshallah, to do the closing. Um, say shukran to Chef Khalid for the beautiful talk. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the night, enjoyed the enjoyed the ending of the Khatim and Dua and uh, and we hope everybody takes the, the tips to heart. Um, but otherwise, good luck for the exams, everyone. Um, shukran. Um, Ilias, do you want to say anything? No, that's uh, you can't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.